So if you're having problems with your lawn and you can't figure out what that problem is just based on reading, uh, based on your recent treatments, or if you want me to take a look at your lawn and give you feedback, um, a soil test is a good move. So uh, given this channel is for folks uh, you know, in North Texas or DFW and surrounding area, um, although the lessons here in 75% in of the videos are applicable elsewhere, um, I'm going to focus on soil testing in North Texas. If you're not in North Texas or not in Texas at all, there's, you can still test uh, with Texas A&M, which is what I'm going to show you. Um, but every state has like one or two um, institutions, whether it's government or education, uh, that offer testing. You generally don't want to use, uh, there's a soil test that you can get on Amazon. It uses a different extraction method and there's details on that. I'll put that in, a link to that in, in the description. If I forget, just drop me a comment and I'll send you a link all to that. Uh, but you generally want to use these extension offices. Um, so everyone in the U.S. watching this, uh, you know, this method will work. You can use uh, Texas A&M. I've used Clemson. I tested theirs. It was really nice as well. Um, you know, they kind of offer specialty services uh, in testing based on the problems that are common in the soil. Uh, you know, of where they're based. So in Texas, um, you know, versus like Clemson, which I think is over in like the Carolinas, it's like their target market. Um, there was just like different types of soil um, they were talking about and whatnot. So, uh, and they were asking for like zones and stuff. So it wouldn't be as helpful like in Texas to do a, a test over there. Although, you know, the cost is even cheaper, although this is not expensive either. So Anyways, let's get started to search Texas A&M soil testing. It's very, it's not easy to find. Um, I would go into this. And then you're looking for the form is what you're looking for. Um, there, and I'm gonna, once you get this PDF, I'm gonna walk you through it. It explains how to do it, uh, but it's definitely not easy. So I'm gonna explain this. So print this off. Um, yeah, you, you have to hand fill this all out. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit. So your name, address, uh, that's all good. Make sure you put your email spaced out like very clear because that's where the results come to unless you request the paper, uh, which is right there. We'll get to that. Uh, county, yeah, that's all straightforward. Client name will be your, your own name. Lab use, don't fill that out. So payment, um, usually I prepay because I thought there was a fee on the checks, but it looks like they removed that fee uh, if there was, but you can basically go on to just Google Aggie market, Marketplace Payment. Um, second, so yeah, if you Google that, you'll get to a page like this, and then you can go to Submit Online. And it, this changes all the time, so just try to poke around um, and get to a page that looks something like this. Then you just fill out your similar info you'd use on the, on the form, um, and then you put in your amount here, and you're gonna calculate your own amount. So. Um, your amount, I would just email results. It's quicker, but if you want hard copy, um, you could do that. I have never done that. Now, what we're going to do is you can do one for like front and back if you treat them differently. And I don't mean like products, like different. Uh, I mean more, for example, like if you top dress with compost, uh, we got organic matter right here in test six in the front yard and I didn't do in the backyard, it may be worth testing both. But honestly, 90% of the time when I'm ordering a soil test, I'll just uh, kind of sample both. So what you'll do is they should have instructions on this. Um, you know, of course, it's kind of made not really for your, for the you know typical lawn owner. It's made more for farms and things like that. So some of the terminology here is like in acres and whatnot. Um, but you basically want to kind of take a shovel, dig a square out, remove the sod off the top, and then take like a cubic inch. Just take a little like heaping uh, tablespoon. Chuck that, you know, in your bag. And, and you'll use like a Ziploc bag. Um, and then go around and, and, you know, to two or three parts in the front yard, two or three parts in the backyard. Um, you want to get like, what's it say here? Uh... Yeah, that's more than what I do. I do like a cup, um, you know, so that's a little bit less than this. And then you just leave it kind of air dry. Over. Yeah, it says it right there. You just, so if you do it today, like today's Sunday, you would just leave it open inside overnight um, and let that dry out. Don't use heat or anything. Just let it sit with the bag open for a day or two and then mail it out the next day. 
Um, and so you just want to sample, like I said, a couple different spots um, or several, like five different spots. So you can get an average of your front yard and backyard and whatnot. Uh, assuming your treatments are fairly similar, that's no problem to do. It'll save you a bunch of money. Now, there's the address there for shipping, which we'll get into, but I really want to talk about over here because this is where a lot of people get stumped on, like, what test do I choose? So, uh, routine analysis, no, test number one is pretty popular. Uh, this one, if you're, again, using a different website, you're not going with Texas A&M, some will include pH and some will include nitrogen. It'll be a separate test. Um, but, you know, phosphorus is great to test for because it doesn't change that quickly. Testing nitrogen is pretty useless because it changes every month. Um, pH is, is good to know, you know, that's, that's it. And that doesn't change that quickly either. So pH, uh, phosphorus, potassium, uh, calcium, magnesium, uh, NA, I think that's sodium, and then S is sulfur and conductivity. Um, that's a decent starter test. Obviously, it's the cheapest one available. If you don't plan to test that frequently, I would go for something a little more than that. Um, if you're just kind of coming back and swinging around like in six months and doing another test, you could do the routine analysis. But if this is your first test ever, I would kind of splurge a little bit here. It's, it's not that crazy compared to what some of these lawn products cost. Um, micronutrients is, is, of course, a good one. So that's $19 total. So you get you get the $12 and then for an extra $7, you get the micros. That's really nice to get too. Um, boron, they sell the micro boron separately. Um, personally, the tests that I like um, are, are going to be something like this where it contains the organic matter and the texture analysis. So the organic matter, I believe, is based off the CEC. Um, it's like a percentage, like 3, 3%, 4%, 5%. Um, and so that's going to give you an idea because a lot of us have clay soils in Texas and then we top dress and level with sand um, because, you know, the texture analysis, we want to get over to like a, uh, like a sandy texture rather than a clay texture. Um, there's more on this on thebermudabible.com. If you just type in texture analysis or just texture, it'll take you to a page that really dives into this more. Um, and so in, in Texas, pretty much all of us here in North Texas have clay. Um, and Bermuda likes sand, right? And the USGA calls for uh, like 70% plus sand. We simply don't have that. So it, top dressing with sand doesn't just level the lawn like in many other places, but it also helps our own soil texture. It does two things at once, uh, which is really nice. So getting an idea of where you're at there, especially if you've done a, a, a sanding before, kind of seeing how you're doing, that'd be a really good to check with a texture analysis. Um, and then organic matter, of course. If you need to add organic matter like topsoil or, you know, in my case, I prefer like uh, ultra screened compost um, or if you have the money, the best is, is peat moss. I mean, peat moss is is really gold. Like it's, it's priced as gold and it, and it acts like gold. It's a really, really great uh, thing to add to your lawn. It helps hold texture, you know, as we're starting to dry out here in late June uh, in Texas. So, um, you know. If you want to go like something fairly cheap, something like that or that, um, but honestly, I would, I've done this one test eight uh, once and you really only need to do it once, like because you top dress every year, or a couple times a year, it doesn't change that much. Whereas you're applying nutrients much more frequently, but you can kind of guess once you get, once you know where your phosphorus is, it doesn't change too much. Um, like I said, it doesn't matter where your nitrogen is because you're just going to need to apply nitrogen pretty much every 30 days anyways, or like a similar amount. Um, so test eight is like a really good one that I would recommend. Um, and then of course you can get into something a little more um, with the salinity. I'm trying to see if there was one that had like uh, micros. Yeah, right here, this one here. You got, you got the routine plus the micros, um, including boron, and then the organic matter and the texture analysis. This one is pretty good here. Uh, salinity, I think I would only do that if you were down near the coast, like if you're down in Houston or something, or within whatever, 50 miles of the coast. Um, but I, I personally do not test for salinity. Uh, this is probably the the main one that I would recommend one off. And then when you loop back in a year or so, do the $19 one or the $12 one. Um, because like I said, organic matter and texture is not going to change that much. Um, but if you have the money, I mean, there's definitely things you can learn. 
with the ninety one dollar uh, sample. I mean, it depends on budget. Um, you know, sometimes I see folks spending like thousands of dollars on online or different products. You know, I mean, if it's an extra thirty three bucks and you have the budget, um, you know, you as well check it out. But personally, um, this is kind of the main one. I I'll go to for one off, and then we'll we'll do a routine with this or micros. So to finish it off, once you figure out what test you're going to do, you can leave this one blank. You can put an ID here so you can write a number or you can just put like front yard, backyard, uh, house, you know, something like that. And then the acreage. So you got to convert your, your square feet. And I usually put like 0.1 or 0.2 or whatever, because uh, it's not on the acreage of your lot. It's based on the acreage of your lawn. So, if, you know, 4,500 square foot lawn is 0.1 of an acre, roughly. Um, what are you growing? Just put Bermuda grass or lawn. It doesn't really matter. They'll make recommendations, but uh, most of them they make recommendations. I'm trying to remember because I don't pay attention to recommendations anyways. I think these guys do. Um, and then you check off the one you want. So like I said, uh, if your first time, maybe check off number five. If you have, uh, if, you, if you can't justify the $66 test, um, then you can do, um, one or, one or two. Uh, so that's that. Um, or any count. Always there's a whole, there's, you could do just the texture or just the organic matter. Um, if you've never put sand on your lawn, then you might already know your texture, for example. So you could maybe save some money by going with just organic matter. Um, if you're in North Texas and haven't put sand, then you have a lot of clay. So just check off one of those. Um, how is it used? I just leave that blank. Like I said, a lot of this is not made for the residential lawn user and they'll clue in when they see the small acreage and you just put lawn or Bermuda grass there. Um, and then, so you kind of just take the number from that, right, the sample. And then assuming you're not doing the $3 for mail, you just take that amount and you either include it with a check. Uh, you can't include cash. Yeah, so right there, don't include cash. So either a check um, or the prepayment. I do the prepayment, you can stick it on a credit card. Um, I think there used to be a fee, like I said, or maybe it was just because I was cheap and like checks are 50 cents or something, I can't remember. Um, and, and credit cards are just nice to get the points. So uh, I do this, stick the amount there, and, and your the last seven digits of your order number. The order number that comes out is like 20 plus digits. It's quite extensive. So once you've done that, you'll fold this up, you'll take your plastic bag, you put it in a little box. I usually reuse like an Amazon box or something if I order something small, like a shampoo or something online or, or a small uh, you know uh, surfactant or something they come in pretty small boxes you can just reuse that stick this inside stick your ziploc inside uh, you could put a little piece of tape on or something just to you know make sure it doesn't open usually they're pretty good though um, and then i use shippo um, again not affiliated with this um, but my background um, in, in e-commerce i know shippo is pretty affordable everyone has their own way of shipping um, but if you don't do volume shipping uh, through another connection that you have you can kind of price check all these guys and get really good rates and then uh, usually USPS is, is the best rate um, with, in, in my case when I'm shipping something small and just shipping it down to Texas A&M um, it's like five bucks or six bucks or something measure it weigh it um, put it into here I'm not gonna log in and show you how to do that and then they give you the address uh, that you use so for for uh, USPS you use this address and then for the other ones you use this um, and like I said, you mail that, you put it in your mailbox, you go on usps.com, you schedule pickup, and they'll come pick it up at your door, or mailbox, wherever you say, the next day. And then uh, it takes like, a, whatever, a couple of days to get down there. Um, they're not that quickly to do it. Probably take a couple, like 10 days, probably. Probably take 10 full days for sure, maybe 14. Um, but they'll get back to you, watch your email, and uh, it's, it's, it's great. I mean, it's, if you've never done a, a soil test before, uh, it's awesome. Um, if you've already done one, you know, it's a little bit less surprising each time based on you'll be able to take, I would recommend after you get a soil test or after you, not after you get a soil test, after you uh, take your soil, because if you apply something in between before when you get it back, you got to remember that. So after you take a sample of your soil, collect a sample, I would start like making note of like dates and when you apply stuff. Um, I'm brutal for this, but like I'll apply something and I like, forget I applied it. Um, but you can basically start calculating how your soil has changed without retesting it every month or whatever. Like if you just applied nitrogen on this, like two weeks later, then your nitrogen's going to be high for a few weeks. Um, so you can kind of just guess where your soil is year round uh, based on that, like I said. 
Uh, phosphorus doesn't change that much. Potassium doesn't change as much either. Uh, but anyways, any questions? Hope this is helpful. This is how you uh, do a soil test with Texas A&M. If you guys want me to go through any other uh, testing uh, facilities or forms or anything, let me know. Uh, but this is the form you want. I'll drop a link to this in the description. And uh, have a good uh, rest of your weekend if you're watching this now. And I'll talk to you guys later.